Today we have uh, Charlotte with us, who is um, a health entrepreneur from Sweden. And her, her area of expertise is providing functional testing and health concepts to help, professionally, help professionals globally. So she's a founder of a company that she runs with her husband, also part of a, a initiated a running charity in Sweden. And is part of a professional network for women in Sweden. So today, Charlotte is going to tell us a little bit about her fitness journey and how it fits into all of her life. Charlotte, welcome. Thank you, thank you. It's a pleasure to be here today with you, Johnson, uh, and the Momentum crew. I'm very uh, happy for that uh, opportunity. Thank you. <laughs> So Charlotte, can, can you give us a little bit of a background of, of, of your, who you are and, and what, how your fitness and wellness um, works in your life? Yes, of course. Um, well, my background is uh, I'm a, a teacher by trade. So um, when I've been working for, a, for a, a couple of years, I realized that this job is very... It's too many roles for me to juggle and a house and a husband and two kids. And I was really stressed out and um, got a fatigue diagnosis. So that's where I was eight years ago. Uh, yeah. And I felt that life was a bit hopeless, um, that I was a bit, I was a bit disappointed <laughs> uh, that I couldn't get all these um, roles that I had I couldn't get my life to go together in a, in a good way uh, so that where I was at uh, eight years ago where my uh, fitness fitness and health journey first and foremost health connected to um, uh, my diet and um, that was the, the trigger point of it all um, and I felt pregnant and then what I was also um, looking at how can I do things differently? I knew it wasn't good to be stressed out. So I was looking for things to improve uh, my well-being, but also to, that was our third child. And I thought this is probably the last child. So what can I do differently so she can uh, get a good start in life too? So that was my like starting point of all this. So um, third pregnancy was like, the, the, the trigger point of well I need to I really need to do something now yes yes there's not, definitely there's not yeah. things that I'm juggling around and this this was the, the kind of I wouldn't like to call you a third child the final straw but the, the final blessing if you want that the, yeah yes. something needs to happen yeah so how did you go exactly. from there well I am um... I actually uh, started some kind of a attempt, fitness attempt, <laughs> this summer before. So I was running like a run steak, more or less, the whole summer. Yep. And I was eating less calories than normal. So I was trying to, to lose some weight, actually. And uh, <laughs> when I fell pregnant, it turned out that I was malnutritioned. So my... Iron levels are so low, so I, I had anemia <laughs> even. Oh. Um, so, and in in that, uh, in, in a period of time, I also got this question, do you want to take a blood test to check your omega levels? And I knew that that was good for the baby and I was a bit curious because it's hard to eat oily fish um, because of the toxins in them when you're pregnant. So, for myself, I thought, well, I might just skip the fish, though I know that omega-3 is very important. So I took this blood test and it came out uh, that I had, um, I ate far too little omega-3 to for my own supply, but then I had a baby yeah. <laughs> that wanted it all from me. So uh, yeah, that, that was something that I realized I have to do something about this to um, and for my mental health as well for my brain so yeah that was so, so you changed um your nutritional input which gave you a benefit as yes well as I, 
I added lots of more food because I realized I can't, yeah, you should be eating a little bit more <laughs> and, and more nutrition when you're pregnant. And then I, I added a, a, an oil um, as well with extra omega-3, a supplement with omega-3 and olive oil. Um, yeah, that I responded really well to. Okay. So um, in, in terms of the, the physical aspect of, of um, what you do, into, did you carry on with the running or how did that work for you? No, I would say um, it was, I was moving, like walking and doing all these exercises to, to strengthen your back and your um yeah, when what you can do when you're pregnant. Yeah. I, I wasn't running or anything like that. Um, but I, you know, normal everyday exercise. Um, uh, so that the fitness journey I did that came just I would say two years ago. I uh, I increased um, exercise, and one year ago I took another step because I turned forty in March. So I decided to be in my best shape ever uh, when I turned 40. So that I did an extra effort um, uh, a few months prior to that. Wow. Yeah, sorry, I, I missed that bus a long time ago. <laughs> you have loads more experience than, than me. <laughs> I, I know I, I've learned more mistakes along the way. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, so you increased to your, your back now, um, running, is that right? Sorry, I increased. You increased your running. You increased your your yes. exercise. Yeah, I did. And so, um, what was that like? Um, it was uh, really hard, <laughs> I would say, to start with. But but I, I um, that's where this charity comes into the picture because I've been. Uh, because I, due to the changed nutrition nutrition status in my body, I actually managed to uh, run without severe injuries. Yeah. <laughs> and I, 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 I could um, put more pressure on me and still be, you know, uh, able to run <laughs> without uh, too much trouble. But because I, I didn't, you know, it was like we felt me and my my uh, colleague we work both with the health together and our very close friends we thought like we have to do something about our own health so we just signed up to do a, a trail uh, uh three months later so that's when we decided that's two years ago so then we decided to to run and and uh i knew how to do i uh, have how to run <laughs> so mm -hmm. i did that but it was a uh you know, you need to have a commitment that this is what I'm going to do, even though I don't feel like doing it. Um, so I, it, I I ran a lot in a very short period of time. Um, so we managed to do the trail. But it was in this period of time when we realized that running is good for us, yeah. but we want to add something to it. So it will be good for others as well. So that's where the charity running for women uh, all started. It was initiated during this training period. Um, so we thought we just raise money mm -hmm. um, to, to um, women in India um, so they can get a new life. Um, yeah, so that that is my... Uh, I wanted to connect the running and the fitness part to uh, for a higher purpose not yeah. like keep yeah. in depth my my thing or this is just for me i know it's good for me that is a part of it but to connect that to to someone else or many other people mm -hmm. that is a thing that will definitely motivate me to put these running shoes on or go to the gym uh, to strengthen my body so I can run because I want to run my whole life. I want to be 90 years of age and still be able to run. So I, I better keep it up and um, prevent injuries because I think that's very important. So I think to, to connect exercise with a higher purpose, 
it will also make you make it sustainable because many people uh, buy their gym uh, subscription in January and they stick that for two, three weeks because they just wanted to lose weight. <laughs> and when, you know, and then you, you you just talk you out of it very easily. Like I, I can do that next week or next month or I can do it next year. Yeah. But if, if there's something else that, um, that motivates you, that will make it happen. For me, I talk for myself. That's how I work. Sure. Uh, but I think many others can relate to that. Uh, and of course, I do definitely. it for my I do it for my grandchildren, so I can be healthy and play with them and run with them and do active things. So I'm not just thinking like mm -hmm. short term. I'm thinking long term. There, there's a there's a whole there's a whole book in what you've just told me, Charlotte. It's mm -hmm. amazing because so uh, you've gone. Uh, I get that from a individual perspective that you you you've um, done something to to sharpen yourself physically um you 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 i don't know if you've dragged your friend along with you or you both dragged each other along the trails yeah um, we actually did <laughs> <laughs> See, i was the trail it was very funny we 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 normally talk about this as a very hilarious experience because we wasn't that fit yeah. we 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 started last uh we were about I don't know if it was maybe 60 people that were running. Um, and we started last and Natalie said to me, um, we, we take it a bit easy here uh, because we will, you know, people will be, get tired and we will get in front of them. So we were like a bit of, you know, shield kind of <laughs> uh, mentality to our running to start with. And then we realized it's this guy behind us with this uh, uh, jello vest. And, and we thought like, oh, yeah, he's, he's wearing a vest. But um, after a while, when we, for the like, third time, was about to, to take the, the, the wrong path, because <laughs> he was all, all over the place in the forest. Every time he's like, oh, no, it's left, it's right. So we realized, OK, this is the the guy that uh, runs afterwards to take care of the, <laughs> the dropouts. <laughs> so, so we were very pleased that we had him as a guide. But, um, yeah. Um, but yeah, we was up it, uphill uh, um, like a ski, a skiing hill, downhill. So we were oh. running upwards and Natalie was actually pushing me <laughs> the last bit. So it was a, it was a roller coaster uh, mentally and physically. This trail is one in twelve k. Wow, twelve yes. k up some some steep hills. Yes. Wow. And down, and up down. and down, all over the place. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I can I can relate to that because not not that I do these steep hills up and down. I tend to try and um, do shorter bits, but. When I, for instance, I go along and we've just restarted park runs in, in the UK. And I am there looking at these, these women, probably who um, maybe of similar age to yourself, and, and they're pushing these prams along. And I'm thinking, mm, mm. Oh, can I keep up with these women? <laughs> the, prams, the answer is no. No. <laughs> because, and then I look at the back of, this one girl's t-shirt and, and she has the number 100 on it I'm like, oh so you've done this at least a hundred times now oh wow there's me on my fifth one no wonder yeah. i can't keep up with you come on, <laughs> exactly back. you have to come back <laughs> i have to keep going so i'm, yes. I'm um, encouraged by the fact that, that people can especially young women can push prams around these yes. tracks and, and yeah gives you hope it gives me hope for the future, for sure. Yeah, yeah. But let me just um, touch a little bit on the idea of community and purpose with you, Arden. So you're, you're trying to, through your charity, touch communities across the world. Hmm. And that gives you a bigger sense of purpose. And yes. for me, a lot of the times, it's, you also talk about the motivation for I guess you're not you're not doing this every time, and it it's bright, it's warm, and it's sunny. 
No. No. It's actually for the first time because I live up in the northern part of Sweden yeah. and uh, we got like this the screen is now you know we got loads of snow during the winter and it would come uh, November December and stick to with us until beginning of May but uh, then it's not the nicest snow left but still it's a long period of time and uh, January February March could be really really cold could go down to minus 30 degrees so this winter, um, sorry, sorry. you are out running at minus 30 degrees. No, not minus 30. I'm going to buy actually a mask this year. Yeah. Uh, so I can run when it's 30, minus 30 degrees. I so got this. What's good, the, what's um, cold, sorry, what's the coldest you're running at? Then? Um, I think I've, it was minus 20. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so this is certain tricks you can do like drink a lot of warm water hot water before you run and uh, have layers of clothes good clothes and uh, uh, hat gonna... and <laughs> a uh, thing uh, here uh, sorry, <laughs> you look I'm, like I'm, you're gonna rob someone <laughs> i'm going to try and overtake the woman in the prow i'm not going to come out to your part of the world and run at minus 20 but it's really it's really nice actually if you have good shoes and like a good yeah. grip because it could be very icy. Uh, but it's fantastic to run during winter time um, because normally in, in the summer it could be too hot to run. You you get so weak and um, yeah. So if you have right clothes and definitely with a mask, uh, special mask that will um, take down the uh, well. You, you can run in minus 25, minus 30 easily. Um, wow. So, yeah. So yeah. to be able to run the whole season, even up here, that is that that was a game changer for me because normally I, I just take a, a bit of break <laughs> between October and April, but yeah. I can't do that. I want to run. We did a Christmas run over Christmas. Uh, so that kind of kept me going. Uh, and the 40th birthday, we did a run um, uh, uh, when I turned 40. That was my um, uh, present. Can I, so I, I ask you how far you did run up for your, your birthday celebration? How far? Yes. Yes, uh, it was 10K. Yeah. And I had a goal to run uh, under 60 minutes, so under one hour. Um, so we did that. Um, yeah. So that was... Fantastic yeah that's really um it, it's and and this was going uphill as well no there was, no we did um like a city run that time so we're trying to to vary because of the pandemic there's not been any organized uh like competitions so what we did we've been running around our village and kind of um, engaged the community to, to raise money as well. So I, I'm encouraging people around here to support. Um, uh, and it's, it's been great, especially the last time uh, when I turned 40, people really um, got together and, and contributed in a very uh, good way. Uh, yeah. So yeah, so we're trying to not limit ourselves just because of the pandemic. So we kind of, you know, did it anyway found a solution <laughs> to the problem. Yeah. Can I can I ask you then, Charlotte, how, how did you come about choosing the charity that, that you chose? So mm. woman. Yes, yeah. Um well I I think it was well it, for many years I always wanted to make a difference for, for people in the world, but I didn't really know what that would be or in what sense of course you can give money uh, I do that to different uh, good organizations but I felt like I want to do something more I think it's some something <laughs> more out there for me yeah. and I was um, but because of how I, I felt everything was about me and uh, like I really wanted to to feel great again and um, so that was a period of time uh, where we started to talk that I just had eyes for myself and for the very very close 
family that was and and my job that was it I didn't have any energy to do anything else so when I slowly started to feel better my mental health get got better my brain was working I changed job to what I do today less stressed suddenly there was space for something else so I guess that was building up a, a hunger for doing something more uh, and and I came and I met a few a number of people that was engaged in helping uh, trafficking victims, for example, in India, yep. um, and other people that were working in Sweden with trafficking, and it was like people that were placed in my way, <laughs> and I was you know really engaged, and I, I I remember I can I can recall a couple of times where I just really really moved. And I got a, a vision at, at one point that I was about to help and I'm nearly going to cry now because it's, it's very, you know, emotional for me. But uh, that I was, um, um, before I turned 60, I would see tens of thousands of women around the globe uh, that will be helped in, in one way. It's, it's so much need out there. It's just not trafficking victims, even though it's a huge number of, of women, but they are so many um, in so many areas let's say for in Congo with the um, Dr. McQuig and the Pansy Hospital for example that sexual violence that is going on been going on there for years and years that also something even though it's not trafficking it's it's terrible and yeah. uh, for women to be able to get educated and yeah we're running for all sorts of <laughs> uh, things that engage us so that was like this vision that was born. So when we got this idea to connect that to the running, everything just fall, uh, fell, fell into place. And they're like, oh, this is, that could be something great. We can start and then we can add ambassadors, other people that can join this community, this charity. And I know so many runners out there just run for themselves but they feel they want to do something more about it. So here we are, we can connect people to this. Um, and, and, and that is our next step in this to actually engage more people um, so they can feel the blessing of it because it's, it makes you so like in, in a, if, if I feel like when I'm running, it's, it's really tough now. I can't, you know, I can't run anymore. Uh, I, I force myself to smile and I picture yeah. myself, um, I picture these women <laughs> when, they are, when they get help and uh, we helped uh, families in Haiti uh, so they could uh, get food um, at one time. So I, I picture uh, the the... Uh, mother in the family uh, shouting food is ready to their children and they were coming running and and very happy to have a meal so yeah. I kind of visualize when I exercise when it's tough or when I'm like oh, I'm going to go out now no yeah okay and so I, I connect that to like oh we're doing so many great things for women and I want to continue that I want to keep going there's there's no end to them suffering so uh, we just need to stick in there. It's an easy thing to do. It's a very little sacrifice I'm doing. Um, yeah. And it's really... But that, yeah. that, that, that's quite a powerful uh, visualization because um, when I talk to people who are, you know, running or, or whatever they're doing for, for fitness or physical perspective, it's kind of like, so what do you imagine? Well, I'm imagining myself, um, you know, tall and slim and, and winning a, a race or something. Mm -hmm. And it, it's quite, a, um, quite something to, to hear you say, I, I'm actually visualizing people across the world who are, who are benefiting mm -hmm. from, from almost, I don't know if quite, my words, not your words, it's like my physical trials and tribulations mm. are, are benefiting somebody else. So it's not just about, like you say, not about my personal time or my how quickly I can get up this hill or whatever it is, but it, it's mm. something far beyond. So it's yeah. great to hear that sort of perspective. Mm. 
Yes, and I think that is um, it's very important because in many people, I think many people neglect themselves in one sense, uh, and they get burned out and just completely uh, finished. Like, um, yeah, many women are doing too much, too ambitions in everything that they do. But I also think that exercise all this fitness hype could be really, really empty if it just stays with your yourself. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, so yeah, I think you can, you can, you can find a deeper meaning in everything you do. I'm not saying that everyone have to join like a charity, but um, to at least think a little bit further than this will, I will just lose weight or, um, because when you lost your weight, what will motivate you then? <laughs> because yeah. this is something you have to you have to keep exercising. You have to go to the gym and strengthen your muscles all life. You know, if you don't do anything for three weeks, you will be, you know, stepping yeah. back uh, a lot. And the, the people that really really needs to go to the gym that is the sixty plus <laughs> people. Um, so it's not like the 18, 25 year olds that's actually uh, really need it. It's, it's uh, much higher up in age as well. Um, that's yeah. to, to keep, uh, keep you fit. And, and yeah. yeah, certainly. No, the no, balance no. and yeah. So if, if we can just segue on to um, the, the physical bit, how, how does that, fitness journey affect your your mental um, mm. and, and spiritual part of who you are mm, good question i i am um, have a few things here uh, one is uh, that i when i run i feel that i can conquer the world that is such a fantastic feeling it's uh, sometimes i'm nearly crying when I run because I I feel like this there's everything is possible and I try to stick to that feeling uh, it's not always like that of course but but, yeah, but in, in certain <laughs> during certain uh, certain circumstances I feel like this is like a, um yeah a, a really greater experience than just sitting in the sofa scrolling your mobile that's a completely different thing to do and I also feel when I'm out in the nature, uh, because I, I believe in the creator of this uh, world, I also feel like uh, I, I can get really overwhelmed by the beauty, by the well. Um, yeah, this, there's a thought about all these colors, all these shapes. Uh, the views, we, we, it's really beautiful surroundings where we live. It will a couple of lakes and it's uphill and downhill and you can you can see the village where we live and a little lake. It's just, um, I get really grateful and it's definitely a spiritual experience and a physical and a mental. I think it's, it's you got all, all spirit, body, mind in a, in a whole <laughs> when you're out in the nature. So I get them. Um, yeah, it, normally it's, I'm really thankful. And and another thing is that I got at least one new good idea when I'm out running because it, you got such a blood rush. It flows uh, much more blood uh, also in the brain. Yeah. Uh, so you, you get like um, clearer visions, clearer thoughts, uh, ideas and normally I listen to personal development or uh, music that are really encouraging and uh, which is like brave <laughs> uh, a bit of a bit of um, you know building up inside uh, things so I'm not not I'm not listening to to news or anything like that it's it's very well thought through um uh, so so yeah and and if I go to the gym I also listen to something that I know is good for me that builds up um my my faith or builds up my belief in what I can achieve and, or yeah different yeah. areas in life so I I, tr I try to combine um 
when I exercise because I, I have a, a pretty tight schedule. And so I, I take, uh, yeah, I, I make the most of, of the time <laughs> when the, with exercise time, yes. Sure, so that, that sounds like it, it's, it's a complete package of, of the, physical, yeah. the mental and the spiritual. So yes, I, uh, it, sounds, it sounds wonderful. I take it all back. Apart from the minus 20 degrees, as um, soon as we can, we'll, we'll get together. I'll be on that flight because I'm thinking, yes. wow, forests, lakes, nature. Yes, you're so welcome to come and visit. a fantastic and visit. place to, to be in and to, to be able to enjoy that environment. Yes, it's so, very healing. Yeah, and that, mm. this is it. Um, where, where we, in terms of momentum, is, is, is exactly that, that people, you know, need to be resilient at this point in time. Well, you need to mm -hmm. be resilient at any point in time. Yeah. And if you can capture that whole aspect of, of um, your life in that place, it, it's bound to have impact um, for you personally, for your family. And I love mm -hmm. the way that, that you guys are saying, okay, well, let, let's make an impact in a vision that actually has no end to it. No, exactly. So it, it's fantastic to see that. Mm. How do you, um, so walk me through some of the detail of, of your, your um, scheduling, because you're saying you, you, you've got quite a busy schedule. You've got, you've got three kids now, you've got a home, You've got a business to, to run. How, how do you schedule the, the sort of physical activity into that? Mm -hmm. I, I have very strict routines in the mornings. So I get up early um, and then I prepare a cup of coffee and a light breakfast. And I sit down sometimes in front of the fireplace we have, but I don't always have time to to light that fire so my husband does that a couple of hours later but I the house is quiet I'm up before everyone else and I sit there with my cup of coffee and I read the bible yeah. one one chapter from the old testament and one from the new and it's very that is food for my spirit because I'm a believer so that is and it it's not funny enough but but uh, it's not uh most of the times it's something i can use during the day so just as i use this uh food i eat so i can be able to exercise uh i got this uh, food from the scripture that i can use words of encouragement and uh, i got an uh, extended version so i can yeah get into like the historical bit and explains a little bit more. Um, so that is a um, sacred moment during the day. And, and if I don't get it, I, I constantly chasing it during the day. And it's harder to get that quiet time uh, when everything is on the go. And then I either wake the kids up to go to school. We take turns being a husband because we both work from home now. Um, uh, or I go straight to the gym or straight out to run uh, five days a week. So I have two days when I rest and then I, I just take a walk or something so I can, yeah, clear my mind and get ready for the day. So I have a very you know, strict uh, routines in the morning mm -hmm. and then I, I, I get ready and uh, just um, sit down first actually and read some personal development before I start the day with a meeting or uh, uh, just, um, yeah, I, I have some administrative work that I do. Mm -hmm. um, and then I, yeah, mainly looking for good people to connect with or uh, talk about health and uh, yeah, extend my, my organization. Um, okay. In different uh, parts of the world. Yes. That, that's interesting in, in the sense of, you, you've got a, um, if I use the word ritual or, or practice, yeah. In, um, yeah. you've got a spiritual practice that is almost meditative in, in mm. what you do. So you, you, when you say it's like 
there's an extended piece of your your Bible reading that is his history. So there, there's some element of, of um, education in it, yes. but it's also things that inform you for the rest of rest of your day in some mm. some form or fashion. Yes, exactly. Could be your words of encouragement to someone else that I meet, or yeah, it's um, it's very interesting to see. Uh, and there's a, there's a hunger in me. I, I, I don't want to miss out on that part. And of course, there's a, um, a prayer or I can um, just visualize. I have, this is in the back here. Uh, I got last the vision board. Yep. Um, so I have, has a special, I have a special one now uh, for this month and this, com this coming next couple of months, period of time. So I remind myself, what am I focusing on why I'm doing this what I want to achieve and who will support me to be able to do that it's a, it's a form of goal mapping I do um, so that can also be included in that so, time that I ponder a bit about so what am I just, doing <laughs> so just give me a bit more detail is, is that vision board for your business for your personal life for, for I have different that? ones Wow. I have different more than ones. One. Yes. And so, uh, yeah, so it is very who, what I'm using for the day. But uh, at the moment, I have some business goals that I'm working towards um, as well. But I, I also keep the, my higher goals and meanings of life. And I think they can. Uh, they go together in one sense, um, but I guess you can focus on different things depending on season or, okay. or what you are able to do. And like a month like this, I kind of clear the table of things that I don't have time with uh, to be able to focus in on one area. Let's say if we, if we um, do a raise and, and fundraise, uh, normally that will be like, over a period of five weeks so before the race and then after uh, of course that will that will take up some time so I cleared the calendar so I can uh, invest some time in the how we work with that through, um, through social media and updates and and trying to to raise money um, so yeah so it, it varies what I focus on yeah but, but we, you can have a goal map for every single area you want, like family, uh, relationships, or um, a life goal. That is the bigger picture, if you like, in life. So, yes, right. I, I visualize it Fantastic. with words and pictures. So with, that's with, very with. powerful. So it's, it's almost like, a, I guess, a mood board for if you're creating a, a room, or designing a house. Or something yes, like exactly. Board. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and, and do you use any tech to, to help you along the way? Are you, are you fitness trackers or are you? Um, mm, yeah, I use uh, Strava. Do you know oh. about that? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It was um, actually a, a user of the health concept that I'm, I'm working with. Uh, that was like because I was complaining a bit oh I need to do something about my my fitness it's like but just get out of there come on <laughs> you can't just sit on the sofa she was a bit hard on me uh, and, and she's very into fitness herself um, so she made me install Strava and on my mobile yeah. uh, and I, I haven't heard about it uh, before but then I, I started to walk. So that was where I from Sydney sofa to walking. So I was walking for a year or so very um, often. So I was tracking. And then when I started to running, she was like, wow, <laughs> you were like a, a, a package of potatoes in the sofa. Now you're running. So she was very pleased with me. Um, so yeah. And then I, I, I got help from a personal trainer uh like for nine months I think before I turned uh 40 in that last year so she could help me online 
so she used to send uh, videos of different exercises. I sent videos of me doing them and she was correcting. So that was a perfect way for me because I live in the middle of nowhere and the pandemic and everything. So going to a gym somewhere wasn't um, like in town. So we have a little small village gym that I um, I actually... Uh, cleaned and uh, tidied and bought some things to to so that's where I've been my second home <laughs> for the last uh year mm-hmm. yeah it was actually a, one year ago now in September wow. so um wow. so I made kind of yeah I, I created uh, the environment so I was able to to accomplish what I wanted yeah, and I think that that's really important. Some of the things just to draw out of what you're saying is for me the idea. So I discovered Strava. Um, yeah, so good. We have to. We have to connect, connect on Strava. <laughs> yes, yeah. I always take pictures when I run, so you will see some of the surroundings here. <laughs> fantastic. No, because um, it, it is a it's a fantastic tool used in the right way to encourage each other to to yes. continue and to be inspired by what other people are doing. I don't think exactly. you won't be inspired by, by my, if you look at the numbers, because I don't do the numbers piece, but um, I think it, it is encouraging to, to realize that somebody else somewhere is, is, is that sense of um, fellowship, if I use that word, along the way where somebody in a different part of the world or a different part of the country is, connecting and, and I have friends who I encourage and they encourage me I say keep keep going keep going you can do it or whatever it is and, and they say yeah I, I noticed you um you're you're in zone two for most of the time now so yeah. your your numbers in terms of of um speed are irrelevant because your heart rate is saying you're getting fitter mm. Mm. So all of these things, I think, are, are hugely important to, yes. to do. But mm. I, I love, I love the way your your journey has, has sort of evolved, where you you now got a second home as a gym, and that's part yes. of part of your life, mm. which which uh, I guess you welcome other people into as well. It's too small that particular gym. gym. <laughs> Yeah. But of course, I encourage people just by because I I let people in by so, social media. So many people's been in the gym uh, to see, and I know there's been uh, many that's been encouraged. And I I try to make it accessible for people. Not that I am a some kind of a superwoman that does crazy things. It's just encouraging people to do that little baby step at a time and yeah. and from uh, if you're totally unfit and not been exercising it's dangerous to go out running you can injure yourself really bad or go to the gym if you don't know how to do it it's really dangerous so you need to take these baby steps and yeah. Um, yeah. inspire uh, change from where they are where at the moment um, and, and there's many that that are more absolutely definitely more fit than I am and that I can get in, in, uh, inspired uh, from so I that's what I'm doing as well but I try to get it like a, a positive not not to put pressure on people but to just inspire and focus on that yes so you 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 are helping by inspiring people to move from wherever they're, they're at that's yes fantastic Charlotte, it's been lovely chatting with you and to hear yeah, the same. what you're doing. Um, just, just as as we kind of draw things to a close, where where can people find you on on the internet? Have you got a uh, something that the charity is is got? So? Yeah, we we have a Facebook page at the moment. Yeah. It's called basically running running for women, uh, where we post things. Uh, around when we especially when we do a race um, we post things there uh, but it's just coming up a, ho- a web page soon um, so hopefully within a couple of months it will be up and running um, 
And I'm on, on Instagram. Uh, it's called the uh, Inlandsresan. It's a Swedish, <laughs> a Swedish word, but it's like the inner journey. Um, so I guess if you Google my name or on Instagram, that will come up a couple of accounts. Um, that yeah. So, but I will I will do one more, uh, like an English version, I think, because I'm mainly abroad <laughs> even though i have my biggest network here of course but yeah. i wanted to be accessible for every people swedish people know english so they can understand anyway yeah so we we will definitely um at the end we'll we'll be on the links that we put it so we'll put it on the links and um, mm, good. um we at we at momentum will definitely be connecting with you on on the strava yes. and on, on it yes so i'm looking forward to that fantastic. So, yes. Charlotte, it, it's been great talking to you. Ah, uh, the same. Thank you for your, your time and, and being part of for what we're doing, and it's been great co-journeying along the way. So Yes. Thank you very much. And it's great what you guys are doing. Uh, keep, keep it up. And you too. Take care. Yes, thank you. Take care. Bye. Bye.